who that to the who that nation welcome to the dome patrol podcast your podcast for d new orleans saints here on the kb radio network i am your host kevin reed and yes i know <laughs> i know last episode of the dome patrol podcast i said we we're taking a hiatus i said that enough was enough and i'm putting the show on the shelf for a minute I'm, i wasn't canceling the show and I wasn't uh, uh, doing away with it completely or whatever. I said that until they make a change, I am not doing the show. I just didn't have it in me. I just, uh, my emotions were gone. I had no input. I had nothing to talk about when it came to the New Orleans Saints because of the recent output that we have been receiving from this team. And it was hurtful to do the show and it wasn't the best of quality and I didn't want to do anything other than the best when it came to the Dawn Patrol podcast so I put it on the shelf until a change made was made and wouldn't you know maybe I should have said this earlier because (laughs) apparently somebody was listening and was like no we can't we can't have the Dawn Patrol go on hiatus we need a change so I guess Um, you know, that's just me fantasy booking in my head (laughs) that they actually listen to this show, but that's neither here nor there. As of today, Monday, November the 4th, 2024, the New Orleans Saints have relieved Dennis Allen of his head coaching duties. He has been terminated as the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. And let me start off by saying this. I know that just like many others in the who that nation uh, have been champion for this moment, have been screaming at the top of their lungs to fire this man. And I was in that camp and I still agree with this decision. This was a, (laughs) this needed to happen. This needed to happen. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm not one to advocate for somebody to lose their job because you know, you're taking food out of his mouth, his family's mouth and whatnot. Now, granted, he ain't hurting. <laughs> I think Dennis Allen was getting uh, $4 million a year to coach the Saints, something like that, somewhere around there. And so he's all right in that regard. But, I mean, you know, this was the man profession. And and you don't want to see nobody fired. But he pretty much asked for this. And, and he, he did not do the best of jobs. And poor Dennis Allen is unemployed at this moment after losing seven games in a row. Uh, just recently, as of Sunday, losing to what many analysts in the NFL circle have described as the worst team in football with the Carolina Panthers. You lose that game after doing it in historical fashion after outgaining this team by 150 yards, after winning the turnover battle, winning the time of possession, everything worked. You basically did everything right except win the game. And that was just it. That was the nail in the coffin. And, you know, the fact that this team find new and inventive ways to lose every single week is – it's amazing. It, it's almost, you almost, <laughs> you get to the point where you watch them to lose to see how they're going to lose this week. It isn't like, uh, okay, can the Saints bounce back this week against such and such? No, it was like, how are they going to lose this week? And that's how, that's how it got. It got to that point with this team. And under Dennis Allen, that's what it was. It, it, it was just, it was just horrible, man. It was horrible to watch. Week after week, this team squander expectations, squander leads, squander victories week after week, and it's tiresome. My only bugaboo is the fact that it took this long for uh, Mickey Loomis and Gail Benson to really get it, to really understand that he was not the right man for the job. Dennis Allen, for all accounts, 
and I've said this many, many times here on the Dome Patrol podcast, that he is a good guy. Everybody who has spoken about Dennis Allen all says the same thing. He is a good guy. And I believe that. I mean, that's the vibe I get from him. Never met the man. Uh, never seen him in person. Never, none, none, none of that. But from what he radiates off the TV screen or on the radio or whatever the case may be when I hear him talk, he really does present himself as a good guy. And I think his players really like him. But just because you're a good guy don't mean that you are a good coach. And that goes in any walk of life. It doesn't matter what your profession is. You can be a good guy, but you can suck at your job. I mean, that's that's true in every profession in life. And poor Dennis Allen, that's what he is. He bit off more than he can chew. He is a great defensive coordinator. I'll never take that away from him. Dennis Allen revived his defense. Before Dennis Allen got here as defensive coordinator, we were the laughing stock. As a matter of fact, the year before that, that's when uh, Steve Spagnola was the uh, defensive coordinator. We were historically bad. We gave up the most yards in a def- of a defense in NFL history before he came and revitalized this defense and basically made him a top 10 defense of uh, going forward until this year. And, you know, it was under Dennis Allen that the defense – went on that long, like a three-season long or four-season long, and I could be underselling it, a uh, streak of not allowing a 100-yard rusher. It, it was under Dennis Allen that happened, you know? So it was Dennis Allen who is probably the only defensive coordinator I know on walking planet Earth to shut down Tom Brady on multiple occasions shut him down made Tom Brady have hissy fits on the sideline breaking tablets and screaming at offense I mean he it was Dennis Allen that did that to the great the GOAT Tom Brady cannot take that away from Dennis Allen as a defensive coordinator but as a head coach it is night and day he, he's just not suited for that job you know if there is a way you can demote him you know, if they would have just demoted him and made him the defensive coordinator, I would have been happy with that, too. I have nothing against Dennis Allen personally, but as a head coach, he is not it. And finally, it all came to a head this Monday when the Saints announced that uh, Dennis Allen has been relieved of his duties. Uh, it In the interim, uh, they named Darren Rozzi as the uh, uh, interim head coach. Now, Darren Rossi is the special teams coach for the New Orleans Saints. And at one point, he was interviewed for the head coaching job when Sean Payton left. And so he, he has a lot of cachet around the league as a special teams coordinator. He has a lot of respect around the league as well. Uh, we'll see how this go. I saw the press conference that he spoke and. I mean, he talks the game. He talks a real good game about accountability, about uh, being upfront and honest, and so on and so forth. You had a couple of players who came out and uh, amen that. So that's all fine and good, but it, it all it all don't mean nothing if you don't produce on Sunday. So we'll see about that. Um, I'm not I'm not going to go on a limb and say that. Uh, the Saints can now turn the season around. This isn't the time for all that. It is honestly isn't the time. The Saints aren't going to turn this season around. It's not like the Saints going to go on this eight-game win streak and miraculously make the playoffs. I don't see that happen. That, that's, that's not going to happen, and honestly, I don't want that to happen. And right now, we need to evaluate this team. Right now is the time to really see what you have going forward in the future uh i was telling a couple of friends of mine today when this announcement came that this is the reboot this is the restart button that the saints just pushed by firing their head coach this isn't the time to kind of turn the season around and make a push no this ain't it 
this is the time where we sit back and look at our young players, evaluate our young talent on the team, and see what we have. And I'm I'm not saying a complete blow up of the team, but I am saying a blow up of the team. <laughs> it, it's time to uh, look at these old contracts that we have. Look at these uh, aging players that we have. Who who isn't producing? And I'm gonna name a few. I'm gonna name some that is glaring to me. That it's time to move on. It's really time to start over. It's start over time and really commit to a two-year, possibly three-year rebuild of this franchise. And we're going to have to go through some ups and downs here, but mainly downs, but it's all for the greater good of the Who That Nation and for this franchise. So right now, here's a list of a couple of players that they can move down the list and kind of check off as, you know, Thank you for your services, and we wish you uh, luck, luck in your future endeavors, you know. Uh, number one, Cam Jordan. Cam Jordan, awesome human being. He does so much in the community here in New Orleans. He is a, a awesome individual. He has given us some real good production, uh, borderline great even, of production on the field throughout his career. That was in the past. Now it's, it's, you know, the father time, father time has caught up to him and he just doesn't have it like he used to. He's a liability on the field <laughs> right now. And so, uh, yeah, it's time to move on from that. It's time to move on. And this hurts me to my heart, but it's, it's the reality. It's time to move on from Demario Davis. I love Demario Davis. Once again, wonderful human being awesome guy off the field even a, a more awesome guy on the field you know one at at his peak demario davis was one of the best linebackers in football he was just in a unfortunate time period where you had so many good linebackers in the nfl that he kind of got overshadowed but he is past his prime uh I don't know what happened, but, you know, it's like any of us. If you get to a certain age, you know, when Father Time hits you, he just hits you. It's not an, a, a gradual thing. It, once it goes, it's gone. It's gone, you know. It's it's over with. And it's there for him, you know. I, I, Demario Davis doesn't hit those holes like he used to. He doesn't read those runs. Well, he'll read it. He just don't react to it as quickly as he used to in his younger days. So, uh, yes, it's coming time for that to move on. The Chase Young experiment failed miserably. It failed. It's time to move on. Actually, I think they need to put a hook in him before this trade deadline on Tuesday. You know, see what you can get for Chase Young. Uh, because it, it didn't work out, man. It just did not work out. Um, uh, Peyton Turner didn't work out. Bad pick. Uh, Isaac Forsky didn't work out. Bad pick. Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, love him to death. 504 boy. It's time to move on. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying nothing controversial. He said it himself at the press conference today. You know, it's time to move on. He's not himself. He hasn't been himself. And he hasn't played like himself. You know, and since he's been here, honestly, he said it. <laughs> he said it. And so it's it's time to move on. That, that's all I can say. It's time to move on there. Offensively, <laughs> Derek Carr, man. Derek Carr needs to go. This is it. Um, Swallow that money. I think, what, $75 million left on that deal or something like that? It is what it is. Eat it. It's time to move on. And that's not to say Spencer Rattler or Jake Hader is the answer. But we need to move on and search for something else. If we're going to pick high in the draft next season, it's time to find another quarterback, find a young quarterback high in the draft and move on from that, build around that. But Derek Carr is not the answer. Derek Carr... Uh, he has gotten Dennis Allen fired twice. 
Do you realize that? <laughs> Twice. He got them fired in Oakland when they were in Oakland, and he got them fired here in New Orleans. He was the quarterback on both occasions. <laughs> so uh, he's not it, man. I'm, I, I just – and I feel I feel kind of I don't know uh, responsible in a way, but not really because I didn't hire him. But I I, I championed it because honestly I thought that Derek Carr was going to come in and just be above average, man. I wasn't asking him to be Drew Brees. That was impossible. But what I was asking him to be was just better than Andy Dalton, be better than Trevor Simeon. That's all I was asking. And as it stands right now, he's not. <laughs> he is, he's not it. I would rather have Andy Dalton back. <laughs> I'm just being honest. This dude, this dude is not a good quarterback. And you let Michael Thomas tell it, he he, he gets his receivers killed. He's trying <laughs> the dude, the dude just ain't it. Um Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara who I love with all my heart. Alvin Kamara, this past Sunday against Carolina, gave it his all. If you, you can make the argument that the team gave up on Dennis Allen and this, that, and the third. Alvin Kamara did. Alvin Kamara went out there and played his heart out. And it, it's, it's to the point you'll get emotional thinking about how hard that guy played Sunday just to lose. How hard he went out there and played all these weeks, all all seven losses, and lose, it's it is soul crushing. It's soul crushing. You put in that much work, that much effort to lose. And look, it's football. It, you know, it, you're not gonna win every week, but constantly losing after giving forth your best effort, it's enough to drive you insane. And so, uh. Yeah, poor Alvin Kamara, but at this point we're trying to we're trying to rebuild this franchise into a winning franchise and he is our best asset. Um as far as you know, trading or you know, so on and so forth. I know he just signed that deal, but I mean, come on, man. But if you're going to keep him, keep him and you still get something else because Kendra Miller nice to know you. Kendra Miller is this dude is so injury prone it's it's unbelievable it it don't even make sense but that's on the organization because he was injury prone at TCU and at college but we left up and got him and don't get me wrong the potential is there because the dude is phenomenal when he plays but it's when he plays um oh I wanted to touch in on on Another player on defense, uh, uh, Carl Grandison. Carl Grandison needs to step it up. Carl Grandison, you're inconsistent. He's inconsistent. He'll play phenomenal one week and all right the next week. He doesn't play bad. That's why I say he just needs to step it up. Step it up. Uh, Brian Bercy, same thing. Step it up. You know, he's a liability against the run. He cannot run defense for nothing. But he can he can pass rush, uh, but he is a liability against the run. Step it up. Uh, but going back to the offense, uh, yeah, Kendry Miller he can go. Uh, you might as well get rid of Jamal Williams because you don't use him anyway. He can go. Offensive line that is number one A plus priority. You this offensive line is trash. It is depleted. It is. I mean, it's almost embarrassing to watch. Now, granted, they've been doing the best they can um, under the circumstances. Trevor Penning, for the most part, is having his greatest year as a New Orleans Saint. Um, even though he still has some bumps against the <laughs> bumps in the road uh, for the past couple of weeks, he has a lot of holding calls these last couple of weeks. Uh, but he hasn't given up a lot of sacks that, that I thought he was going to do. Uh, uh, Taliense Fuaga. He's been doing pretty decent um, in the position that he is. And that's another thing about the offensive line. You draft these guys, and each one of those, you can go up and down the line. The offensive line, everybody is out of position. And I mean that 
they played a certain position in college, they get to the Saints, and they're asked to do a different position. Oh, you play left tackle in college? I want you to play right tackle here. Oh, you play right tackle in college? I want you to play left tackle here. Oh, you played center in college? Oh, I want you to play left guard here. You know, it, it's like, man, if you're going to draft a guard, let them play guard. You know, what's what, it doesn't make sense. Oh, they're so versatile. They can play all five positions on the line. I don't care about all that. And, and that's how we get lumped up in the situation that we were in all year, at least the uh, last few weeks, that we were depleted on this offensive line because, oh, oh, if such and such get hurt, we'll just move him over there to to guard and blah, blah, blah. And, and then they all got hurt. Now you trap. Now you don't have nothing. You got you to gotta scrape the pile and try to find somebody um, um, in free agency on somebody's practice squad. It's a reason why they're on the practice squad. There's a reason why they was in free agency, and you expect them to come here and do something. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. That's <laughs> that's why a lot of this, a lot of this is Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen gets fifty one percent of the uh, blame why he got fired, uh, but the other forty nine is uh, Mickey Loomis. Mickey Loomis gets a pass because he's part owner, so that's the only reason he still has a job. But that's neither here nor there. But there's a lot of uh, question marks with a lot of players that they really do need to evaluate going forward. That's why I think that this next eight weeks remaining of the season, it should be an evaluation thing. It it should not be let's turn the season around and make a push. Uh, No. And I'm not saying tank. I'm not saying tank. Just flat out just stop playing. No. Let's go out there, play hard. Play hard, but at the same time, um, we're trying to find out what we have for the future because you're not doing nothing this season. Let's, let's throw that out the window. There's nothing happening for this season. Now, had you made this move three weeks ago, maybe, but it's too far gone at this point. Um, here's a statement from Saints owner Gail Benson on the firing of Dennis Allen. Uh, Dennis has been part of our organization for many years. He is highly regarded within the NFL. He has been extremely loyal and professional and, most importantly, an excellent football coach for us. Uh, I don't know what she was drinking with that. But anyway, uh, all of this makes today very tough for me and our organization. However, this decision is something that I felt we needed to make at this time. I wish nothing but the best in the future for Dennis and his family. I will always be considered, well, I'm sorry, he will always be considered in the highest regard by me and everybody within this organization. Uh, Mickey Loomis also had a statement released. Mickey Loomis, as you know, is the general manager and executive vice president of the Saints. Um, He says DA is an excellent football coach. Well, he said that already, you know in that infamous uh, press conference he had. (laughs) Uh, But uh, he went on to say, this season we have had an avalanche of injuries and it took its toll. DA has never offered excuses. He fought each day for this organization and his team and that this is what makes today disappointing. Dennis has been an integral part of this organization's success for the better part of 20 years. He will be missed. This is why I can't stand Mickey Loomis. I'm even, even when you do the right thing, you still can't do the right thing. What was the going by that statement? It, it, it's no way he fired this guy. How do you fire somebody that you feel, <laughs> that you feel fought every day, that was super loyal, that uh, uh, was integral? Uh, an integral part of this organization and all this here, then why did he get fired, Mickey? Then why why did you sit him down and tell him to go clean out his office? Just say what it is. He sucked for the last seven weeks. Actually, since he's been the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Just say what it is. But, see, you can't make yourself look bad. It's already looking bad on you because you're firing a guy that you compared to uh, Bill Walsh and Chuck Knowles and Tom Landry. <laughs> you compared them that, and you came back and you had to fire him. 
You had no other choice but to fire him because he wasn't doing his job to the highest level. He, he just wasn't. That's the, at the end of the day, that goes for anybody. If you're not turning in results in a results-driven organization, despite what you say, Mickey Loomis, you have to let him go and find somebody that will. And that's what it is. Yeah, I, I, Mickey Loomis is so PC. I understand Gail Bish, uh, Benson. I get all that, you know. But Mickey, come on, man. Miss me with all that. But in any event, yes, uh, Dennis Allen, no longer the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Uh, uh, Darren Rizzi um, as the interim. You know, good on him. Good on him. Let's see what this does. I mean, like I said, he talked a good game in his press conference. But he's going to have to put up <laughs> and shut up. Let's see what you got. Because at the end of the day, this is an audition. This is an interview for the next eight weeks. Let's see how you get this team together. Uh, maybe, maybe you'll be the next coach of the New Orleans Saints. Who knows? Uh, but uh, Or some other organization. Who knows? But as far as a head coach, just to look ahead, just to peek ahead and see who the Saints should go after. Well, we'll evaluate that further towards the end of the season. Uh, but if I had to choose right now, I would – I would have to look no further than Detroit, Michigan, the Motor City, Motown, and look at Aaron Glenn. Look at their offensive coordinator. What's his name? Johnson? I, I can't think of his name right now. I, I'm blanking on it big time. But anyways, the, look at those two. You had you had uh, Aaron Glenn here in the building. Matter of fact, you interviewed him before he left. You interviewed him before you hired Dennis Allen, and that's how he ended up in Detroit, and look what he's doing over there. And now, the only pushback I'll have against Aaron Glenn, he's the defensive coordinator. You kind of need a offensive-minded coach these days in the NFL, uh, the way the league is set up. Now, that isn't a deal-breaker for me by no stretch of the imagination because I feel the New Orleans Saints truly, truly, need a leader of men it's not about x's and o's it's about the jimmies and the joes you need somebody that's going to lead this team that's going to have these uh players wanting to run through a brick wall for them look no further than pittsburgh look at mike tomlin mike tomlin is not an x's and o's coach but he's a leader he's a motivator he is he is the uh the uh, mouthpiece for that team that gets them prepared to play each and every week. I want to play for Mike Tomlin. You look at Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell is a uh, awesome, awesome head coach. Not so much X's and O's, but he's a motivator. He's a leader of men. You need a coach that's going to connect with your players. And Dennis Allen, for some strange reason, didn't. He connected with him. I think, like I said earlier, I think the players liked him. Like, oh, he's such a good guy. But he wasn't the one to put foot to butt when they messed up. You know, he, he was so humble with it. He, he he wasn't the one to, you know, pull you onto the carpet and say, look, bro, you're going to have to catch these balls. You're going to uh, have to wrap up with these tackles. you got to do better uh, getting off this block. You're going to have to, you know what I'm saying? I don't think he was that guy. I could be wrong. I could be completely off base. I'm not at the practices. I'm not at the team meetings. I don't know. But I do know whatever he was saying wasn't getting through to them guys, no matter what they say. And those guys did quit on Dennis Allen. They did. And so, uh, I mean, just go look. Go listen to those press conferences. They're on YouTube. Go look up those press conferences from Tyron Matthew and, uh, I think it was Foster Monroe and another player, I believe. Uh, but go go listen to those interviews after they, you know, the firing. And all of them were pretty unison with the mood in the locker room. They were they were saying something without saying something. They were saying how that team was not together or isn't together. They their cliques, you know, their their 
separated and you know they it's kind of divided in that locker room and i heard via a source you know i, I don't have many <laughs> but the ones i do have i listen to and via a source there was a team meeting that didn't include the coach but it did include the owner last week yet yeah, gail benson talked to the players and according to to the source, the player said that Dennis Allen did not have that locker room. They did not have, he did not have that locker room. And that, that was part of the reason why this decision was made this week after the loss. It had got to that point. And it was the uh, cherry on the top of the Sunday when uh, Dennis Allen had the post game press conference after the loss against Carolina and he just looked dejected. He looked like a man that was just defeated, man. And I, I told my cousin, I'm like, man, I, I actually feel kind of bad for him. <laughs> you know, I felt bad. He looked pitiful at that press conference because you could see it on his face. He knew this was it. This was it. <laughs> he knew it. You couldn't help but know it, it, this was it. And he knew it. And, and I think, uh, 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 Gail Benson and Mickey Loomis saw that and said, you know what? It's time to pull the trigger. And that's what happened. And so, yes, ladies and gentlemen, in the who that nation, Dennis Allen has been relieved of his duties. I am, uh, like I said, I am optimistic. I am. I'm not happy. I'm not dancing on his grave by no stretch of the imagination. I wish him all the best. I really do. And I believe he's going to land on his feet. I think any team would love to have Dennis Allen as their defensive coordinator. If there was a way to bring him back here as as the defensive coordinator, I would love that. It's it's possible. Think about it. In Denver, uh, Van jo- Joseph, who, 504 boy, yet again, he was the head coach of Denver a few years back. They fired him. I don't even think he lasted a season. They fired him. Uh, but when Dennis, uh, Dennis Allen, the well, same person, uh, <laughs> Sean Payton was hired as the head coach. He brought in Van Joseph uh, as the defensive coordinator in Denver. And so he returned to be the defensive coordinator at the team that he used to be the head coach of. And, you know, kudos on him, man. You know, that's cool. And so it's possible for Dennis Allen to come back as defensive coordinator. It depends on who our head, next head coach will be. Um, you know, at that point, I don't care. It's really, (laughs) I'm focused on the head coach from there. We'll let it, we'll let that individual pick their staff. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but I I would love to know who that nation, how are you feeling today? Honestly, I feel a little relieved. I do because I, I, well, I'll put it like this. I'm a little more optimistic because at least the saints are moving in the right direction. You actually made a good decision in a season that's been full of horrible decisions. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't, I hate to see a man lose his job, uh, but at the same time, he kind of acts for it, you know? So I just, uh, I feel good moving forward in the future. I feel good. Hopefully, um, with them doing this in week nine, going into week 10, that give us a little head start on the process looking ahead, evaluating coaches, as well as evaluating our team that is here, uh, uh, players who are here, but evaluating coaches around the league and seeing who we can get to jump on because, trust me, this is not the last coach that's going to get fired this season. So (laughs) there's a lot of teams that's going to be looking for coaches. We got the early head start, and we got the early jump on the best. Let's get the best guy for the job. Don't get the best guy who fits the the organization in there? Nah, that, 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 what or what what organization? What what culture does the Saints have? That culture is gone. Sean Payton is gone. Uh, Drew Brees is gone. And so that's it. And this is the last piece of that um that so called culture, winning culture that we had. And here we are. <laughs> you know, here we are. We are officially starting anew. Well, technically, uh, Darren Rozzi, he was on Sean Payton's coaching staff as well. So 
I guess we still do have pieces, but you get where I'm trying to get. You get where I'm going with it. We we it's time to move on and start a new culture, a, a new winning culture uh here in the Houdat Nation. But I would love to know your thoughts on the firing of Dennis Allen. Do you think that the Saints will make the right decisions moving forward now that we got this monkey off our back? Email the show KB Radio Podcast at gmail.com. You can also search for the show on all social media platforms. Just search for the KB Radio Network as well as YouTube. Subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel and like this video. Share this video if you don't mind. Don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the Dome Patrol Podcast, your podcast for D New Orleans Saints here on the KB Radio Network. Thank you for joining me today as we have our own little second line for Dennis Allen as he exits his offices on airline. Uh, as far as the show is concerned, I, I guess I will be back. I, I said that uh, we were going to take a break unless they made a change. And they made a change. So we'll be back later on this week to preview the New Orleans Saints versus the Atlanta Falcons this Sunday in the Dome. And we will be back after that game to recap that Saints victory. Wink, wink. I want you all to enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, we know we got a storm that's in the gulf that's approaching. It's, it's not supposed to be that bad. It's supposed to break up before it gets to us and whatnot. But... You know, as of lately, uh, a pop-up thunderstorm has caused havoc here in the New Orleans area. So in any whatever capacity this thing hits or whatever, uh, be safe. Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. Don't worry about your uh, material things. Make sure that you and your family are safe. That's the most important thing. Don't forget to go vote on Tuesday, depending on when you listen to this show. Uh, this Tuesday is election day. Uh, make sure that you go vote if you haven't already. As always, can't wait to speak to you when we come on back this weekend to talk more New Orleans Saints football. Until then, I'm going to continue to scream to the top of my lungs, baby. Who that? <laughs>